Okay, so we're example 20 in our proof topic. We're doing proof by induction. Uh, if you haven't watched the example 17, 18, 19, go and do so. Uh, we're going to have a look at this example 20 and uh, another example 21. We're using proof by induction not for uh, summation uh, or, or see mathematical series with the sigma notation, which we've done in the past couple of examples. But we can use proof by induction for a whole lot of mathematical ideas. The, the process is the same, even if the algebra is slightly different. So again, uh, we're going to have a, an initial step, we're going to have an inductive step, and we still have a goal to aim for. That's the key thing is uh, y you kind of know where you're going to head, and the idea is that you can use that to help shape your thinking. So uh, example 20, it says if n is greater than 2, then n cubed minus n is divisible by 3. That's the conjecture. We want to show that that's actually a true thing for all n. So our initial step, as always, is prove true for n equals 1. Or in fact, in this case, a good example of the fact that we, we often start with n equals 1. But if you look here, it says that n is greater or equal to 2. So the smallest possible value uh, that we can use for, it, for n here is 2. And that's fine. Uh, well, let's just check. Proof true for n equals 2. Uh, that is what we're going to do. We're going to show that n cubed minus n is 2 cubed minus 2, which is 6. Uh, and obviously, we can take a common factor of 2. In other words, that's divisible. Oh, so it's 3, not 2. So we want it to show that if it's divisible by 3, then 3 is a, a factor of 6. And therefore, it's divisible by 3, which implies that the conjecture is true for n equals 2. There we go. So that's our initial step. We'll set up the first domino. I keep talking about the dominoes. I like that analogy. We'll set up the first one, and then we're going to set up some other ones to knock over with that. So the inductive step, as always, is to, we're going to declare that we're assuming the conjecture is true for some value n equals k. Now, we normally have a formula at this point uh, with our sigma notation, but here we have to just decide what the statement or the conjecture is here. It says n cubed minus n is divisible by 3. So instead of n, uh, we can say k cubed minus k is divisible by by 3. In other words, we're going to say that this, uh, if it's divisible by 3, we're going to say it's a multiple of 3, so we just like something like 3p or 3a. Uh, or 3m, whatever, and we, we're dealing with in, well, what we're we dealing with, we're dealing with whole, uh, not n is greater than 2, so they're positive integers, so we can say that perhaps that we're dealing with uh, natural numbers or positive integers, one uh, or the other. So, uh, that's what we're looking for here. Um, that's so this is what we are going to bank as our true thing. And when we make an, an assumption, we're going to then try and substitute that into what we're doing with n equals k plus 1. So the next step is we want to prove true for n equals k plus 1. We want to see if indeed we can show that, that it's the same for n equals k plus 1, in which case, in this formula here, uh, any time k appears, we should really be getting k plus 1. Um, and that's going to be uh, 3 times something. You know, that's what we're looking for. We're, we're trying to show that um, that k plus 1 uh, cubed minus k plus 1 is still some uh, a multiple of 3. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, in this case here, uh, we actually have to just, we don't, it's not that we're waiting to end up with k plus 1 cubed, we have to just 
accept the fact that we have to put this in. So we write it down as k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1. Now we can't write equals 3q. That, the whole point is that we're trying to end up with that. So what can we do to try and show that it's a, a multiple of 3? Well, we want to use this somehow. So in other words, we're trying to get ourselves to a situation where we can substitute k cubed minus k with 3p. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, we can multiply out the brackets here. k plus 1 cubed is k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. And we can multiply out the second bracket in that way, which leaves us with k cubed uh, plus 3k squared uh, now, in fact, we could simplify that, but if you, we could make that plus 2k. So you know that's plus 2k, and then there's just no constant term there. The problem is that what we're really looking to do is to come up with, as it says here, k cubed minus k. So I'm not going to simplify it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the k cubed, and I'm going to take the minus k, and then... I'm going to write down plus 3k squared plus 3k, and the ones cancel out. And if you look here, for the first two terms, k cubed minus k, is what we have assumed to have the value of 3p. So we can substitute that. We know that k cubed minus k is a multiple of 3, and that leaves us with this expression here, which fortunately... We take a common factor of 3 out, we can prove to be divisible by 3. Okay, so therefore, what we've shown is that if uh, k cubed minus k is divisible by 3, then k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1 is also divisible by 3. We've shown that. Uh, the next term up is actually true. So, in other words, if true for n equals k, then we've shown that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So there's your dominoes. Because we have as true for n equals 2, uh, in this case, And true by induction for all at n, n greater or equal to 2. There we go. So that's proof by induction for a, a conjecture that's not um, involving sigma notation. We've still got to use some algebra to try and substitute the, the kind of assumptive formula into our, uh, our proof for the k plus 1 term. Okay. There's one more example. You can have a go at that as well. It's got an inequality in it, so they're interesting to explore. So hopefully that was helpful.